don't sell your Bitcoin right here, right now, because Bitcoin is your portfolio insurance and you got to focus on the other part of your portfolio. All paths lead to Bitcoin. All paths. You talk about Jeff Bruce's deflationary path, it leads to Bitcoin. You talk about QE Infinity and uh, Stealth QE Infinity and this BTFP, which, by the way, BTFP, backstop the Fiat Ponzi. Okay, that's what this funding program is that the, that the Fed has started. Backstop the Fiat Ponzi because, very simple, mathematics, debasement is 100% certain. I've never seen a simpler trade in my whole life. And I call it a trade, even though it's an investment. Credit analyst and portfolio manager Greg Foss has given talks on the dangers of credit default swaps, CDS, and their part in the 2008 financial crisis. In other words, a CDS. The buyer of a credit default swap, CDS, pays the seller a premium in exchange for insurance against the risk of default on a specific bond, loan, or other type of debt instrument. The CDS seller is obligated to compensate the CDS purchaser for the face amount of the underlying debt instrument, in the event of a default. The 2008 financial crisis is in large part attributable to credit default swaps CDS, which are used as a form of insurance to hedge against the risk of default. In addition to hedging against default, Foss argues that credit default swaps CDS, can be used to speculate on the failure of companies or countries. He thinks that investors were able to bet against the housing market and take on too much risk using CDS, which contributed to the financial crisis. Foss adds that financial institutions frequently use CDS to sidestep regulatory capital requirements, which could lead to greater financial instability. He argues that averting another financial crisis requires stricter regulations and more openness in the CDS market. Bitcoin is an alternative to conventional financial instruments like CDS, which Foss suggests investors consider. He thinks Bitcoin is safer than other investment options because of its decentralized nature and limited supply. Foss has also noted that Bitcoin investors are protected from the risk of a financial institution or government, defaulting on their investments because Bitcoin has no counterparty risk. Foss has become a prominent Bitcoin proponent, regularly promoting the digital currency at events like conferences and podcasts. And so I, I, I have this thesis on credit default swaps and you can actually value Bitcoin because like I like to, everyone says Bitcoin has no intrinsic value, blah, 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 blah. Well, go full circle and Mike Novogratz, who we love him or hate him, the man is a big man in finance, tweets out today, Bitcoin is a credit default swap on sovereign debt. Think about it. And I've been inundated, Novo. Greg Foss has been saving, set, saying this for years. Novo tweets this thing out. I'm like, well, okay, my thesis is getting around because I can calculate the value of Bitcoin using credit default swaps on the United States and show you that Bitcoin should be trading at over $200,000 today on USA debt alone based on insurance prices for that debt. I honestly believe more than ever, the banking crisis that we are going through right now will be reflected in sovereign debt credit spreads. And the value of Bitcoin intrinsically goes up as bank stocks go down. And I can show you the exact correlation using credit default swaps. Hey, you don't have to buy the thesis, but don't listen to Charlie Munger and don't listen to Steve Hankey, who says it has no intrinsic value. They are wrong and they are going to expire. They're past their best before date. They'll expire. They shouldn't buy green bananas, right? You know the story. M money wasn't ever actually, or barter actually never ex uh, never existed. What happens, what happened in tribes is, and this is according to Cesar, is that you, let's say the tribe went out and killed a buffalo and people needed buffalo meat. The, the hunter would decide, okay, I owe money or not money, I owe food to this person because they gave me some chickens at one point. And what money was, was a ledger of your debts that you owed to other hunters in the tribe over time if you had taken something from them. And then that ledger made sense because it could have been seashells, it could have been rocks, it could have been, in the case of North American Indians, wampum. Uh, or, you know, it eventually went to, to, to gold as being this ledger. So I see what you're saying, Jeff. Like, I, it makes a lot of sense from that side as well. I guess I'll just firmly plant myself right in the middle here and say, it's not happening 
quickly because the other system is just so big and so ingrained that you can't change it overnight. And by the way, I don't want to change it overnight. And I don't think Jeff does either. We've talked about this network transfer where it's not like a light switch. You turn one off and you turn one on. You, the, the network grows in parallel. And I think we're seeing that happen right now. The people that are coming into this Bitcoin community are blowing my mind. I finished reading Jason Lowry's book, uh, Software, which is 400 pages of absolute intense, in my opinion, brilliance. Other people might think it's intense drivel, but please read it because I am blown away by the intelligence of this young man. Um, it's a little repetitive, but everyone says FOSS is repetitive too because we repeat <laughs> ourselves because people don't listen. So you have to say the You're same thing six bring- ways. The price actually yeah. starts being correlated to increased risk means increased price of Bitcoin, meaning long a long volatility asset again. So yep. sorry to jump in front of you, Jeff, but uh, John said a word, uh, suboptimal. And every time I hear that word, it makes me think of that doorknob, Jim Cramer, right? So do you guys watch Jim Cramer? Because he uses that word all the time. How dare you, Jeff? How dare you compare me to Jim Cramer? No, me. Sorry. That Yeah, that was false. So 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 look, um, I'm I'm losing battery here. But but here's the key thing. I'm down to my last 5% of battery power on my iPad here. So if I lose you guys, it's only because I want to leave you with this. Jim Cramer's a moron. Okay, he is. Absolutely, I think we, I think we can person. all agree on that one. Yeah, he's the law. So suboptimal. You reminded me of him. Don't sell your Bitcoin right here, right now, because Bitcoin is your portfolio insurance, and you got to focus on the other part of your portfolio. All paths lead to Bitcoin. All paths. You talk about Jeff Goose deflationary path that leads to Bitcoin. You talk about QE Infinity and uh, Stealth QE Infinity and this BTFP, which, by the way, BTFP backstop the fiat ponzi okay that's what this funding program is that the that the fed has started backstop the fiat ponzi because very simple mathematics debasement is a hundred percent certain i've never seen a simpler trade in my whole life and i call it a trade even though it's an investment fiat debasement is 100 percent certain in all scenarios that's advantageous to people who are uncertain how they should approach that because it's there's no doubt. It's a hundred percent certain. Yeah. You know, it's really an asymmetric investment, but you got to trade something to get into it. You're trading fiat to get into it, and then you keep it for as long as your thesis is in line. But it's an investment, hundred percent, twenty year investment. But here's the coolest thing. You know that fiat debasement is a hundred percent certain, and the gold bugs have known this for a long time. But they just they're holding a inferior uh, hard asset. But don't sell your gold to buy Bitcoin. Don't sell real estate necessarily to buy Bitcoin. Sell your bonds. Hey, Preston, your bonds. Those are fiat contracts. Those are programmed to debase. Sell your bonds to buy Bitcoin. That's the simplest trade I've ever seen. And three years ago when I wrote my paper to get me to become really good friends with you guys, I think I think I'm a friend. (laughs) Jeff, Jeff, actually, uh, (laughs) <laughs> you know, you, you've saved a few of my shekels here and there and uh, more importantly, some life uh, choices. So I'll just say this. Three years ago, I saw this coming. I've been ambulance chasing on the bond market since then. Bonds have probably reached a historical fair value level if fiat debasement wasn't 100% certain. But fiat debasement's 100% certain and bonds are a fiat contract. So you still shouldn't own bonds for the long term. You can pretend you can trade them, but picking up nickels in front of a steamroller is never a wise investment or trading advice. So all of these paths lead to Bitcoin, John. In sum, Bitcoin could be a useful tool for hedging the risks of complex financial instruments like CDS. So what did you think of the interview with Greg Foss? Leave a comment below and let us know what you think. Thank you for watching today's video on Market Empire. We hope you found Greg Foss's guaranteed prediction on the future of Bitcoin as intriguing as we did. If you want to stay up to date with the latest news and insights on the world of finance and business, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you in the next one.